Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, today's session is kicking off the Club Runner Changeover Chaining Series. Uh, and we're going to be taking some time to show you a little bit more about what's new in Club Runner, uh, some recent updates, some product news, and some other items. But before we dive into that, I just want to make a couple good housekeeping things and, and let everyone know kind of what's going on here. Uh, we do have a chat room, so please. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Uh, we'll do our best to keep an eye on the chat. And of course, if there are any questions for a team that do make it over there, we'll do our best to answer those. But I really want to call everyone's attention to the question and answer section. So if you have any questions about the presentation very specifically, uh, put them in the Q&A area. That way we will do our best to, to tackle a couple of those at the end of the session. Um, but otherwise, yeah, please try and do your best to keep chat to chat and questions for our team in the Q&A box. Um, and yeah. All right. Uh, so I am Zach Woods. Uh, I am the product owner for Club Runner. And today I am joined here with Hallie Astorbatty, our co-founder and COO. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Awesome. So let's go ahead and just jump right into uh, everything we've got covered on. So just as a very quick recap, and I guess to, to address one more housekeeping question, this webinar is going to be recorded and will be available at a later date on the Club Runner community and part of our training series that is available on the, the support and knowledge base. Um, but we are going to be covering some product updates from the platform. Uh, some news for products uh, that's going to be brand new for you guys and some things that are on the horizon like Club Runner Nova. So let's go ahead and dive right in, starting with recent updates. Uh, so we've been hard at work over the last, I mean, we're always hard at work, but we've been really hard at work over the last several months, uh, bringing to you, bringing some fantastic updates to the platform. Um, and we're highlighting, I mean, this is just a uh, number of the updates. We actually do updates every two weeks, but these are some of the bigger feature callouts that we really want to draw your attention to uh, in case you've missed them for any reason or you just didn't know that they were available for the platform. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in, getting started with our mobile app updates. So one of the most recent features that we have brought uh, to all of our customers, both club and districts, are mobile message broadcasts. Uh, mobile message broadcasts allow you to use the Club Runner app to get messages out to the other members who have the app installed. As long as they have the, as long as they're logged into the app and they have it installed, they can receive notifications. Uh, this allows clubs to share and change important information. Like, for example, something horrible has happened to your meeting venue and you, it's going to be changed, or maybe it's just a regular change of event. Maybe you're doing just something different at your meeting and you want to make sure that you get a reminder to everybody in the club before the meeting that day. Uh, so you're able to target groups like your active and honorary members or just your club executives. Just like at the club, uh, where club executives can target their membership and executives, the district can as well. Being able to choose different groups that make sense for the district, like everyone on the organization charts, all of the presidents and key officers, and they can do this both for the upcoming year and the current year. Uh, also, all of your notifications for both club or district are collected into the little notification sections, and you'll be able to see the notifications that were for you. Additionally, anyone who receives the notification can like and engage with it, letting you know that they've seen and actioned that, that notification. We've also brought profile editing, uh, not only for individual members, but for the staff as well. So um, as we're gonna be talking about in a couple of different points tonight, the Club Runner mobile app is really what we think of as regular members using the system. So we want to make sure that the things that they need to do are available right at their fingertips more often than not. So all members of the club who can log in, in fact, all members of the district who can log in can update their own profiles. If they're a club officer or staff member at the club level, they'll be able to manage all of the members in their, in their club's profile. And of course, at the district level, district officers have appropriate access as well, being able to navigate between the clubs and update di disparate member profiles. And that flows down to all the other district officers like AGs and uh, district administrators. Of course, all of this information for our Rotary Clubs is also integrated with Rotary International, so any updates that are being processed through our mobile app are going right into Club Runner and then being processed by any of the integration services for any of your opted-in values. 
we've really worked to improve our navigation menu in the mobile app, trying to break out into the different sections for your club runner, your club, and your district. Uh, so some new tools that are there is our member search. So just like you can log into the district's member area to access a district-wide member search, the mobile app has this exact same member search available to you. And by searching for people's contact information, you can get, you'll be able to see their results. Just like all of our search systems in Club Runner, they are powered by our privacy controls. So members can choose what information is shown about them or not, and whether or not they exist in the search for regular members to see them. We have a brand new all events listing. So one of the things we've been working hard at is encouraging more communication between the clubs within the district and the clubs in the district itself. So our new all events feed pulls from your district, all the other clubs in the area for your district and your own club as well. Uh, and you can of course control and change the filters so you only see the information that you wanna see over the range that you wanna see. Um, in addition to the all events feed, we updated the landing screen to make sure users can see the menu more easily. We know not everyone is familiar with all of the latest concepts about how you navigate mobile apps and websites and whatnot. So we added the menu button actually to the direct bottom of the club information page so that even if you didn't know that that hamburger button up there was a menu icon, we've at least tried to give you some more to launch and open that menu. Uh, as part of the events in that all events feed, um, if for event planner and uh, our volunteers module, you have them associated with an event, you'll be able to do a quick online RSVP or volunteer sign up. Uh, and it works exactly the same as if a member got an invite in their email, they get logged right into the website, and then they can fill out and sign up either registering themselves and guests or filling out the sign up list. Another great feature we have just added for our Rotary Clubs is foundation recognition. Um, this foundation recognition is coming directly from your data at Rotary International, and it allows you to see your Paul Harris status, any of the money that you've donated towards that, your current uh, foundation recognition points, any of the contribution levels like major donor, Bequest Society, et cetera. Uh, and in addition to uh, the annual status that you're in, uh, if you've made your contributions for Paul Harris Society in the current year, sustaining member, and every Rotarian every year. Of course, most importantly, in addition to seeing your status, there is a great new button there that'll allow you to go right out to Rotary International and make a donation to the foundation. There is going to be a full session on the Club Runner mobile app this weekend. Uh, I'm actually going to be the host for that session, and I'd love to see a whole lot of you there. Uh, so if you have a moment and you haven't already registered, we'd love for you to take a moment to use that QR code to go over there and register. Um, and I'll just re-emphasize re it here. Every single session is being recorded. If you do register and you're unable to make it, you'll at the very least make sure you get a recording once it's available. And you know, we'll know that you attended and that you were interested in that session. Yes, thank All you, right. Zach. That was, uh, that was really great. And I think I'm seeing some of the questions coming in. Um, we'll definitely have Q&A at the very end. But just to touch on a couple, um, you know, the, the mobile app is part of your Club Runner subscription. Um, it's, it's free for any member of your club or district to download, and they, they will need it installed in order to get those uh, push notifications. So I, I encourage you to attend the webinar and, um, and encourage all your members to install it. Um, another really major module that we released uh, last year is donations. And uh, we're really uh, proud of the uptake uh, by a lot of clubs and districts. This is available for, for both versions. Uh, because what it allows you to do is create a donation landing page on your website very easily. And also, so not only take donations in general, but also be able to set up campaigns. And all these are, are dedicated, almost like buckets that you want to be able to collect donations for. So they'll have a landing page, you can have a, a photo and a description, a lot of different settings if you want to publicize how many donations or how many donors um, participate in that campaign, you can do that. Um, and then be able to create custom thank you emails and just in general, be able to track, um, you know, be able to accept any comments that people want to make with their donation. And then on the back end, um, you also have the ability to see a lot of statistics. So, um, you know, you can also track all of your donors 
Um, and on the next screen, you can see that, um, you know, not only can you have, you know, be able to have that big picture view of how all of your campaigns have done, how much, how much, you know, how many funds uh, in per campaign, but you'll also be able to manage the donor list, export it, uh, do a custom email. So if you want to do any follow up messages and be able to say, you know, here's the impact that your giving has made. Um, it's a pretty powerful uh, module, and uh, I believe about 9,000 donations were made just in the past 12 months, raising about $1.2 million, and um, I, I think a very small percentage of our customer base has actually taken advantage of this, so we encourage you to, um, to you know, install it on your website, and it's part of, uh, you know, club and district packages. So another uh, good update that we wanted to make sure everyone's aware of is TrueSync. So since 2010, uh, when Clubrunner introduced rotary integration, it was any data that was changed in Clubrunner would automatically sync up to Rotary International. Um, and that worked great. Um, but you know, over the years, we've heard a lot of feedback on ways to improve that. And a lot of times, uh, you know, maybe it was in a district and club secretaries would do different things. They would sometimes go into my rotary to add a new member or perhaps a member themselves logged in and they wanted to update their address. So, and that's fair. So what we rolled out last year is two-way true sync. So now if there are any changes made to Rotary International, they will reflect in Club Runner. But we wanted to emphasize tonight that it's really important that this setting is opted in. And you can see that this, um, this is something you can navigate to through, uh, if you go to RA integration and then click through to settings, you can tell us exactly what fields you wanna allow uh, the synchronization to update. And we always try to give as much control as possible in that regard. Um, so please make sure you do that. And if you're a district, uh, you know we can also help you with some reports and try to show you which clubs have done this or not, so that you can try to get as many clubs to synchronize their data. And then we always like to show stats. So I just wanted to kind of highlight just a couple of stats. So, so far, this is again for a 12 month period. Uh, you could see that, you know, there were about 40,000 officer updates, about 29,000 address updates. Um, you know, I think that's 25,000 new members. It's hard to see the white on yellow there. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's really important to get make sure your settings are correct so that you can uh, take advantage of the synchronization. Oftentimes, when clubs come to us and say, "Oh, you know, I don't know if the synchronization is working. I, I don't know what's going on," there's usually a really good reason. And please contact our support team, and we're more than happy to help you troubleshoot that. Rotaract is also something that. Um, is integrated as well uh, as of last year. So Rotaract members are part of the database. Now, this is something also a lot of people may not be aware of, but districts can add Rotaract club types and their members into Club Runner and then be able to synchronize the data with Rotary International. And just to also give you an idea of, of the room for improvement uh, in, in this regard, there are about 842 Rotaract clubs listed in Club Runner, but only 17% have the RI integration um, Synchronized. So again, if you're wondering why the Rotaract members don't seem to be integrated, chances are it's that setting. Uh, so please, uh, you know, allow us to help you get that set up. Fantastic. And that takes us right into email link tracking. So link tracking is a feature that we uh, released just uh, earlier this year. Um, and it allows you to gain a lot more insight into what people are doing with your email. So in addition to our delivery tracking that we've had available for a long time, most customers have been opted into link tracking. Uh, and this allows you to see for all of the links inside of the email, what anyone clicked and actioned on. Not only do you get the number of clicks uh, broken down per user, you also get the number of clicks and unique clicks broken down across the links. Or links. So we have graciously borrowed Rotary District 7080s bulletin as an example of the bulletin and 
we pulled some of their tracking statistics in the back end. Uh, so we're not showing off any user data, but this is the delivery stats that you can see for link tracking. And you can see that some of the links were much more were much better engaged with than others. For example, the call for the Rotary Dinner attendee had 28 unique clicks with 63 total clicks. So there was a lot of action on there. Up at the top here, we can see that we're overall of the 1,400 recipients it went to, there were 292 unique clicks. So like, yeah, uh, we can also see that there were 683 total clicks for those links. So yeah, every single time a link is clicked, there's some systems there to capture who, who's going through it and which of their links are, and then we're right. able to display this. Uh, you can also get a breakdown per user, uh, but that's not something that we can show off today for, for some obvious reasons. Another way that we're trying to improve users' day-to-day -day experiences is we've recently launched the universal login. Uh, so now, anytime that you go to clubrunner.ca or you go to clubrunner.com and land on clubrunner.ca, there is a giant login to clubrunner button up on the top right hand of the screen. This brings you to our new universal login page. Regardless of it being a Rotary account or not a Rotary account or any level of service, club, district, zone, you can use the universal login to log in. And what's really fantastic about the universal login is once you've logged in, you will now be able to choose where you go to. So a lot of times what happens is a club officer might be trying to go to their club subscription, but somehow they land up on their district's website. And now they don't have the tools that they have that they want and expect and need access to. Uh, so this changes to help make sure that whenever users are interacting and logging into the system, we always try and give them a choice to where they're going. Now, right now, this is just part of the universal login, but in the future, this login choice will be coming to the other login screens as well, so that members, regardless of where they come in on an entry point, can always be directed to the correct place. An item that we continue to tell people about as well uh, that that's been uh, that has been in beta and will be going a hundred percent fully live in Nova with some updates is membership success. Uh, you can think of membership success as your toolbox for helping ingest and onboard new potential members. Uh, it puts forms out on the website so that potential person who's interested in becoming a member of your club can give you guys some information. And then there's a whole workflow of interactability where. You ask them some questions, they provide you some answers, and you can continue to move them along the workflow. You'll be able to take notes about each stage of the process that they're participating in. And at the final time, if they pass all your requirements and criteria, you can very easily add them directly into Club Runner with the information that they already provided you. So it's your, it's your one-stop mini CRM for onboarding and getting new users into your system. Lastly, uh, for our recent updates, uh, at least under this section, is Cloud Events. Um, so Cloud Events is our new primary events module. Uh, more is going to be coming with Nova, but it is the whole package. You can build an event landing page. Uh, you can sell tickets. You can sell products. You can sell add-ons. You can collect donations, and you can ask conditional questions. So no more are the days of my event runner when you need to ask one question to only one ticket holder and not every single other person who registered. Cloud Events has a lot of really powerful options to collect that data. And we'll be talking about that a little bit more in detail uh, when we share some additional product news in a couple minutes here. Uh, but yeah, we're really excited about Cloud Events. And I guess just to reaffirm here, this is the new events module for Club Runner. We're going to be talking about that a little bit more, but this is the future of Club Runner events, and we're so happy that it's available for all customers today. Uh, we do have some really great example of customers actively using Cloud Events today. Uh, so in the Bryan Rotary Club in Texas, they run a flag program, and part of that flag program is the they need to be able to collect details about who the flag is going to, or uh, you know if you're registering it for someone else's, that you have the permission and everything. And Cloud Events gave them the ability to collect all that information more holistically and make really good progress. Another club that has been using it for a little while is the Rotary Club of Sparks, and they're taking their fourth annual po poker tournament through there. And once again, the ability to register and collect details was a critical component for both of these events that would have been a lot more cumbersome in some of our older systems, but uh, Cloud Events has really eliminated and, and streamlined those processes. It's really exciting to see how different clubs are using some of the modules, because it's not always how it was necessarily designed. So. 
yeah, we really encourage you to try it out and it's included in part of your Club Runner subscription. Yep. Speaking of which, moving right along to some product news. Hallie, take it away. Great. Um, yeah, so th just wanted to start off by saying, you know, we are always committed to delivering an excellent platform. We always, you know, we started off 20 years ago, um, you know, being a great value and we want to continue um, continue that today. So we're really excited to say that we're going to be making some announcements today about um, some, you know, package and offering updates that will give you even more value, especially as we head into uh, the next era of Club Runner. And that starts with cloud events. So when we first launched uh, cloud events uh, about a year ago, maybe six or six to nine months ago, uh, it was still kind of under preview, but it's officially out of beta and generally available and included in all standard and light packages. So you should be able to ha um, have access to it as a club or a district. And as Zach mentioned, cloud events is really going to become the unified uh, events module in Nova, which is our uh, next era of Club Runner, which we'll talk about in a sec. Um, and my event runner, which many of you may be using, uh, it's been around for a while. It's really um, served a great purpose, uh, but this is going to eventually be sunsetted and retired. It's not going to happen overnight. It's likely going to be sometime uh, in 2025. But we really encourage you to use cloud events instead. It can handle a lot of what my event runner did, but, but actually with more flexibility and without any per registration fees. So um, it's a great time to make the switch uh, for your events. I see a question in the uh, Q&A that was about this, so I'm happy to answer it now. We're also excited to announce that we're expanding payment provider options. Um, and this is something that we're going to be doing regardless of which region of the world you're in. Um, so PayPal has been uh, supported for some time uh, for some regions, but we're happy to announce it's uh, as an, available as an option um, for any, uh, any club or district, as long as the currency is supported um, by PayPal, of course. And then really excited to announce that Stripe is coming soon. Uh, it is actually supported today by the newer modules. So cloud events and donations can be connected to a Stripe account. We're just wrapping up support for dues and billing. And once that's available, we can officially say that it's um, possible to switch to Stripe. However, if you're really keen on using it for uh, an event or your a donation campaign, you're welcome to contact our support team and we can get uh, get you uh, set up with that. Great. So uh, also super excited to say that as part of our goal to really simplify and unify our product offerings, um, we are now going to be making some of these enhanced modules uh, part of the standard package uh, in the new version of Club Runner. So enhanced committees, which really allowed, uh, you know, some additional functionality, uh, you know, in terms of uh, documents and emails, the Volunteers Pro that allowed public uh, volunteers and additional sign-up lists and some other functionality, uh, and the barcode scanner add-on. Those are all going to be rolled into uh, our standard Club Runner package. So, yay! <laughs> and um, yeah, and then the other thing I wanted to mention is um, some of the limits that we may have had in the past. So, you know, the, the package limits that we announced many, many years ago really were there as part of, you know, some of the constraints of the system in the past. And to be honest, we haven't really been enforcing them, um, you know, for, for many years. But officially, package limits are going to be lifted and um, replaced by just a reasonable fair usage policy. Uh, so what that really means is, you know, there aren't really any limits um, to some of these things. We really want to make sure that you're taking advantage of Club Runner to grow your club, to build engagement with your members in your community, um, and whatever that takes. And obviously, if there's a club that, you know, goes crazy and just, you know, starts sending thousands of emails, I mean, that's not fair to all concerned. So, you know, those, those situations are rare. And, uh, you know, that's really the only reason we had these official limits, but uh, we would address those on more of a case by case basis.
And then lastly, uh, the club owner sponsor ads uh, or also known as the banner ads. Um, so again, this is something that was a carryover from 20 years ago when club runner first started. Um, and it was a great way to um, subsidize the program. Um, however, you know, thanks to a lot of feedback we've had over the years, uh, we're going to be retiring it officially uh, effective July 2025. So really the, the idea here is that, you know, we really want to make sure clubs have full control or as much control of their website and their bulletins as possible and really leverage the, the sponsor ads that are club based. So that's definitely going to remain in place. This is this is not about your own club sponsors. This is about the club runner um, ads that, that appear. So that's going to be applicable for all renewals. And if you're halfway through a renewal period, there's going to be uh, a prorated credit uh, that's applied. All right, next, what's on the horizon? So you heard me mention NOVA a few times. If you were, if you attended um, the webinar, I think it was February 15th. Um, so we talked about the next era of Club Runner. And what that really is, is we're tackling a lot of focus uh, points here. Um, so first of all, it's usability, it's uh, flexibility, there is, it's basically a new, a brand new infrastructure um, that we're moving to that's going to allow us to do a lot of great things. Cloud events and donations are already on the Nova infrastructure. We're just going to be moving the rest of Club Runner there. So the main focus is, uh, so there's quite a few different areas, as I mentioned, um, but the, um, Sorry, Zach, if you could go to the next. Yeah, so we're going to just quickly touch on um, the user experience and, and the streamlining data just today, because we do have a NOVA session on May 13th, not the 12th. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to take away from that uh, session, but we are going to just, I just want to kind of talk about the what we're goal, our goals are with the member experience. So over the years, Club Runner grew and as we continue to add more and more functionality. Things just became a little bit more complex. And so, you know, our goal is really to make the system easier for the day-to-day -day member um, and unify a lot of the areas that kind of grew over time. So as an example, you know, when you want to add an event and you're not sure, do I add it under speakers? Do I add it under event planner, you know, cloud events? It, it's really something that we want to make one single access point and then let the system decide how to handle it from that point. There's going to be a lot uh, a lot more modern interface that includes a simplified navigation menu. So again, over the years as we continued adding more and more tabs, um, you know, they, you know, the, it just kind of grew and, 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 and it can be overwhelming for the first time user. Um, and then lastly, just wanted to touch on the mobile app that is going to be continued to be the main, you know, sort of like the first class member experience for the regular member, not necessarily an officer or an administrator. Okay, so in terms of what's coming soon to Nova, again, we're going to be touching on this a lot on May 13th, is harmonizing people records. So again, we had members, we have contacts, we have guests, and we introduce prospects as a part of membership success. So we're going to be tying all of those together into one person record and really following their journey as they engage with the club, as they join, as they leave, as they come back, um, and then keeping all that history and that and, and engagement data, which is really exciting. Unifying the events module that I address. We're also going to be looking at uh, the you know what we can do in terms of um, integrating our, the finances in Club Runner with the system's um, best of breed systems. And also we're going to be improving and unifying engagement tracking. What that means is today there's attendance tracking, but that's no, that's no longer just the only you know, means of uh, you know, measuring someone's engagement. And we're going to be bringing all, that, all of that together under a better user experience. So, um, if you're interested in getting a first glimpse of Nova, I invite you to um, join us in the 
uh, May 13th webinar. So it, it will be, yeah, I think we can have the, I think we have the QR code up in the next day. There, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're busy answering questions, so all good. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be at the same time as today's webinar. So if you, whatever time it is today when you joined, this, it's going to be at the same time, but it's on Monday, May 13th. Most importantly, I'll just chime in, like all of our webinars, it will be recorded. So if you can't join us on time or if there's something that takes you away from the presentation in the moment, it'll be there for you in the future. All right. Uh, so talking about some features that we can talk about more under Nova uh, and potentially coming a little bit sooner than that, uh, we are continuing to improve the overall uh, platform system. So uh, multi-factor authentication is going to be coming as part of the universal login and club logins. Um, and what this means is you'll have more control over authenticating and verifying that the person who is logging in is who they say they are. Um, so part of this multi-factor authentication will be the ability to either validate via email or app. Uh, we'll have some recommendations and encouragement on what those be best practices are. In addition, for the administrators of the accounts, they'll be able to choose which roles that that's enforced on. So, you know, if a club wants to have it on for every single member of the club, that will be their choice. That won't be the default, but like, for example, administrators, we would more strongly encourage, including anyone who has access to like being able to export data from the system. Those would be good roles to assign that access to so that when those users log in, uh, they actually have to enter a second code that is only generated either by us or their own device. And it really says that I'm really Zach. Not only did I have Zach's login information, I have a physical key that says Zach is Zach. So it's extra confidence about who is logging in and using the system and making sure that they're only doing the things that they're allowed to do when they're allowed to do it. Uh, I rolled the wrong way. <laughs> uh, so as uh, as we've been talking about TrueSync over various different parts of our webinar so far, uh, we are going to continue to improve it. Um, so it has been a bit like we've had rotary integration available since 2010, and we've continued to improve upon it during my entire time here, and I'm, I'm coming up on 10 years now. Um, we're really excited that we're going to be offering automatic officer changes. So if a club officer is updated or changed at Rotary International, that will sync back down into Club Runner. Uh, and in addition to that, we're also going to be adding the club information changes. We thought most importantly for most clubs, membership information and member changes were going to be by far the most important thing and the most active thing. Uh, but we also know that for districts and, you know, some of those clubs, having that data just flow in if it came from another source is really important. So we want to continue to reduce the amount of extra effort our, our customers have to spend when the data is, uh, when those updates are happening outside of Club Runner from regardless of where it's coming from. If it makes it to my rotary, it should make it back into Club Runner. Uh, in addition uh, to some of the new features coming to Nova is an updated HTML and image editor. So our new online editor, uh, it's been upgraded. It's latest and greatest. It supports all the, your favorite browsers and mobile devices. So uh, users who are actually on mobile devices will be able to interact and communicate with Club Runner and use our email system a little bit easier. Um, something that I and the support team are really excited about is the upgraded image library. So alongside our new editor is also our new image library. Uh, in this new image library, you can crop, resize, flip, and rotate images, uh, in addition to some fun Instagram presets and some fun just general adjustments. If something's a little too saturated or too contrasty, you'll be able to get in there and update it. Um, this is available to our, this will be coming to our beta testers before it becomes to, before it uh, arrives in Nova or and slash before Nova arrives for everyone else. So if you'd like to get a chance at testing our brand new uh, editor before it's available to the general uh, general public for everybody, uh, you can you sign up to be a beta tester by sending us an email uh, or scan. I believe if you scan that QR code, it should also land you on the right page so that you can sign up and be a beta tester as well. Uh, but we'd love to have more people in our beta testing program, and this will be one of those first updates that'll be sliding into it ahead of time. Alongside our updated HTML editor and image library are brand new bulletin templates. Um, so these are pre-designed bulletin templates so that you can spend less time designing them, figuring out what you want to have in them, figuring out the content that needs to be there. And instead, we kind of give you a boilerplate place to start. So 
just like the templates that exist today, except way more and more opportunities to personalize them. So we've done uh, subscribing to newsletters. Thanks you, th thank you for donations, general thank yous, like anything you could think of that you might ever want to send out as a news newsletter, maybe not everything, but a lot of cases I think we have covered, including some really fantastic, like just general purpose holiday uh, things. Uh, the, the, the front end team has been really hard at work. We obviously, uh, Clubrunner has had a very good relationship with Clubrunner's Rotary branding team, and that continues today. Uh, we work with them to make sure that the updates, new themes, new packages, new color palettes are appropriate, are appropriate and in brand compliance, uh, and we're going to be continuing that going forward. Just like our bulletin templates, we are also going to have brand new page templates. So just like the bulletins to help you get that, to help you get going faster on that work, we also have page templates because I think at the end of the day, a lot of clubs want very similar content on their pages. Now, how they organize it and the content that goes on there differs, but a lot of clubs need an About Us page. They need a big page for their event. They need a page to talk about the goals for their organization. And we have a lot of those, we will have a lot of those available as part of Nova and coming to Club Runner in the coming months. Uh, and again, this is also things that we work very closely with Rotary's team on for brand compliance uh, to make sure that, you know, the colors are right, the content is right, the messaging and marketing is right. So we continue to, to work very closely with Rotary's branding team. Uh, which is moving right along to you, Hallie. Yeah, so speaking of the Champions and Beta group, um, really encourage you to join us and get involved if you want to be, you know, one of the first to learn about uh, upcoming features, or if you have a lot of feedback, and I'm seeing a lot of really valuable feedback coming in uh, through the chat, which we're going to be capturing as well. Um, this is a great way. This is a, a, a smaller group than obviously the general um, customer base, but uh, it can be a pretty powerful one um, when it comes to being able to shape the product and, um, you know, really raise your raise your concerns and challenges and your wish list. Like if you could wave a magic wand, what would you wish um, Club Runner could do? Um, so actually what we'll do is I'll, I'll grab the address. If you don't have a, you know, if you can't scan that QR code, we'll, we'll post that sign up form um, in the chat towards the end when we're doing the Q&A. Uh, so you have a direct link there. Another part of the beta group, and actually something that's available to all Club Runner users, is our user community. And this is essentially a forum um, that you can participate in. We, we're in there as well, um, and we can you know, help support when there's questions. But it's really intended to be peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, best practices. How have you guys done this? What, you know, how do you handle that? Um, and this is actually where we're also going to be posting all of the recordings uh, for changeover series training. So you can go in and you can browse the community without a login, but as soon as you want to post something or maybe respond to a thread, it's just gonna prompt you to log in and you could just use your regular uh, Club Runner cred credentials as you mm -hmm. normally do. Awesome. So just talking a little bit more about our support, I want to uh, make it really, really transparent that every single customer of ours, regardless if it's you're a member who's logging into your club or your district, all the way up to the administrators, every single one of our customers who can log in, you are access and you have access and you are eligible to receive support. All members who call in, even if all they can do is log in and access their own information, they can get support for our team. So if you know that a member is having problems logging in or making a change in Club Runner, or they just can't get through some process, I'd really encourage you to have them reach out to our team so that we can help them because that support is there for them. Um, we do have a massive knowledge base at clubrunnersupport.com. Uh, there are tons of help articles. There are all of our recorded webinars, including all the 2023 uh, changeover training series from the previous year are all there. And very shortly, those are going to get replaced with the 2024 version of the changeover series. But all of our, all of our regular webinars that go on um, are posted there. We continue to expand it with knowledge base, like continue to expand knowledge base and guides. Um, and in addition to that, you can 
can, you know, log a support ticket to get in touch with our team. We post news updates there. So for example, uh, things that are going on in Club Runner, some of the things that we went over at the beginning of this webinar um, are all, um, they're all posted there on clubrunnersupport.com. So, I mean, in addition to all of this on the off chance that we're having some disruption with the platform as well, that will also be posted on clubrunnersupport.com so that you guys can be confident. Yes, it's a system-wide you know, disruption or something like that. And yeah, um, yeah, I, th I think that's it about clubrunnersupport.com. But yeah, uh, most importantly, all access to our, our, our knowledge base help articles, they're all public. I'll even go so far as to say in most cases, if you Google your Club Runner problem and put Club Runner in the search query, you're probably gonna land back at our support website. Uh, so, and all of our documentation is available to the public. There's nothing for us to hide with these articles because everyone should know how to do the things that we have available on our platform. Uh, so with all of that said about how you can find some of our resources, you can also get in touch with us. We are available Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Toronto time. We're technically available a little bit more outside of that, and we do have coverage on the weekends for emergency issues and anything else like that. But uh, if you have a question, you don't know if Club Runner can do something, you want to know if Club Runner can do something in the future, give us a call, send us an email, get in touch with us. That way we can understand your needs and either help you get through that process in Club Runner or at the very least tell you that, hey, we can't do that right now. But, you know, thank you so much for that feedback and we can keep that in mind for the future. So we oh. really invite you to um, check out the other sessions. So clubrunner.com slash training is how you can get to the page where you can see the other 21 webinars um, that are available. Everything from the mobile app to cloud events to donations and everything in between. Um, and yeah, we encourage you to do that. And they are going to be recorded and posted on the community um, probably once the series has concluded. And just as a reminder, they are all free, of course. Fantastic. So we always like to wrap up, before we go into q and I always like to wrap up to, with what our promise is. And that is, as Club Runner, we are, remain as committed as ever to delivering world-class software to Rotary Clubs and Districts, backed by excellent customer service. And I see a lot of really familiar names in the attendees, and some of them I remember from 20 years ago, <laughs> especially, you know, in, in you know general Ontario area. So um, you know we're here, we're committed. Um, we're not going anywhere. and um, you know we want to make sure that we make Club Runner the best solution for you. And with that, we can dive into lots of really, really good questions. And I think I've marked some that um, that we want to answer live, but I don't know how you want to do this Zach if you wanted to just oh. start on the top. Well, I see, I see, okay, we have a few, uh, let's see. Um, oh, and if you ask, if you asked a question in the chat, uh, if you don't mind posting it in the q and I think that might be a little bit easier for us just to go through uh, the Q&A ones, but. Um, okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, I'm going to start out with some of the questions that uh, another one of our team members highlighted uh, uh, for us. So uh, someone asked, is the package for donations an addition? And I would just want to quite, clearly say donations are available for every single customer account that exists, well, customers with websites. So you, you need to have a website to have the donation module. So our few clubs that are using Club Runner admin only, that wouldn't be available to them. But if your club has a website, that's Club Runner standard packages and Club Runner light packages across the board, the donations module is available. The only caveat or catch is that you do need one of our payment modules, uh, and that would be specific to your regions. Though, so as we mentioned earlier, uh, in addition to for Canada, we have uh, Oh God, you know what? I'm not gonna get into all the different payment providers because I'm gonna misname some of them because they keep changing their names. Most importantly, any of our connected payment providers all support the donations module. If you'd like to learn more, we'll be happy to reach out to you and uh, you know, help you make uh, help you get that payment uh, account going and active. Yeah, it's not an add-on, it is inclusive to the standard service. Okay. And then as uh, a follow-up, how many of these new specific uh, modules or the, maybe the enhanced versions will be available under Club Runner Lite for 20 members or less. 
I think that's a that, that might be something we need to talk about a little bit more uh, in the back end, or at least go back and get, get some additional clarification for. But I would say um, right now the light module doesn't have the committees module, so we'll have to we'll, we'll we'll come down on that. But if the module has it now, then that feature will be turned on. At least that's that's how uh, that's kind of how I've understood it. So, for example, um, you know, if if light has volunteers, they'll have volunteers pro. If, but definitely cloud events and donations are available as part of light. Yes. I mean, in, in general, we do try to make most of our tools available to most of our customers. So a lot of the things like Hallie said that we've talked about tonight, cloud events, donation, they're available for the greater majority of all of our customers. And then another question here. Um, so the club owner storage of documents, pictures, events, presentations, et cetera. Will that continue with unlimited storage for a district? Yes. So whether it's a club or a district, that's, uh, you know, that's part of the club owner subscription. All right. I have a question here about donations. They're asking, it, can they use donations feature for our club foundations or only for the club? Um, and I would say that's very much up to you. You can connect as many payment accounts as you want to the donation module, and each one of those payment accounts can donate into their own bank accounts. So as long as that's something that you guys can get set up for financial and record keeping, that's 100% to you. Like if you want to deposit the money into a third party club, right, because you're hosting a thing, as long as the payment account will take the money and deposit it, there shouldn't be a problem with that. Okay, I'm going to mark that one as done. Um, so I'm just looking at the ones that we marked as uh, that we wanted to answer live. Um, so regarding Rotaract, uh, Rotaract. Yeah, I think I, I think I accidentally marked uh, that question about Rotaract. So uh, someone asks, are all of these features available for Rotaract clubs as well? And I would say, generally speaking, yes. Now the catch is that they do have to be subscribers today, um, but as part of Nova, we will be improving the Rotaract club offerings to their districts. We're not there. We can't talk about it too much more yet because it's the dust isn't settled on everything. But Rotaract clubs will be receiving some love under Nova for their uh, through their districts. Uh, but if any single Rotaract club, we they can come on Club Runner today. They can be underneath their district regardless if they want to choose to subscribe, and they are eligible for support integration services, the mobile app, everything. Like they are the same Rotarians as everyone else in the district. You, they're just not there yet in some cases. All right, I'm taking a look for another one about the questions we want marked. Uh, as speaking of Nova, I know we're kind of jumping all over the place, but um, someone <laughs> asked when will Nova be available so that it is currently um, in the process of being, um, we're basically migrating some of the functionality that is, a little bit more legacy into it because we don't want to sunset and retire some of the things yet. So we're targeting the end of 2024, uh, but definitely we'll definitely keep everyone posted on the progress. Yeah, I think to, to talk about that a little bit more like timeline wise, we want to have a beta offering at some time closer to the middle of the calendar year. And we're hoping that everything, all, you know, all the final bits will be done for the end of this calendar year or very early in uh, 2025, right? Right, yes. Time continues to march on and I get the years wrong. Um, another question um, from one of our customers is with the free enhanced modules, will we see a reduction in our user fee? So, I mean, I would say candidly, yes, unless you've also grown somehow <laughs> in your club, like if you've doubled or tripled in size between now and then, uh, that might not be the case. But yes, if we were currently billing you for enhanced committees or volunteers pro under Nova, those will be going away. So you would at least have those taken off of your, your invoice and billing. And I think we got the question about the CR light, or at least we did it to the best. I, I think we'll be able to give you guys a much clearer answer on the CR light and what's coming under our FAQ. And I'm sure we'll keep seeing those questions. So we will absolutely make sure we get that answered. All right, so we have a question and I, I see Hallie flag this. Hallie, did you wanna take this or do you want me to take this? Um, yeah, I, I would like you to take that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's based the on- factor authentication, one, right? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, I think I think the person is asking about uh, th there's there's a couple questions here kind of all hidden in there. 
So first, there's a question about you have to give a member level 30 access to give them access to the website. So something we didn't touch on today and that we are thinking about as part of Nova is improvements to membership permissions. That's not settled yet, so we didn't want to talk about it too much. But we, I guess to say very candidly, we do want to enable clubs and districts to have an administrative person that just can have access to the website that does not have access to any other parts of the system. So that is something that we are working towards. Um, though that does mean, so for the multi-factor authentication, um, that's you can kind of think of that more as a second key or like a padlock. For your house, I think if 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 to, to make more sense of that, like you have your regular key that gets you into the door lock, but then the multi-factor authentication is the padlock. You need two keys to access the kingdom, uh, so you'll be able to enforce who has to provide that second key based on those access rights. So if you wanted to say all of your admi club administrators have to use multi-factor authentication, you'll be able to enable that. Yeah, it's really important to note that we want to keep the control with the club to decide what's important. Um, and who should have access to that. I mean, we recommend it for all members, but um, for at the very least, members who have access to the general membership database uh, really ought to have the multi-factor authentication just as part of keeping up with um, security standards. Um, Zach, there are a lot of questions about the app. I don't know if you wanted to tackle those now. I can help uh, read them if, out if you want. Yeah, if you want to highlight one or two for me, I'll be more than happy to do my best to answer sure. those. Um, so there are a few questions about, in order to get the updates, do you have to download a new app? And I know the answer to that is no, but I think you have to get it updated. Yeah. You at least have yeah. to have the app installed from the appropriate app store, but this is not a, it's just a new update to the existing Club Runner app that has always been there. Uh, and going forward, that's just going to continue to get updated. So you do at least have to download the current app, but there is not a new, new Club Runner app. <laughs> oh, but the updates should be automatic, right? Yeah. Uh, more or less. Okay. I don't want to, uh, yeah, we push out the updates and it's up to your device to either do it automatically or you to push those updates. But yes, more, more or less. My my brain's getting into the semantics of a bunch of stuff. and it's Yeah, not I think it's a phone set. <laughs> have, most yeah. phones have it set, set so that the apps update. But if you're not sure, we're actually going to be posting the links to either Google or Apple. Um, so that you can go to the, go to that link from your phone. And if you, you, you'll see the option there to update, I believe. So, yeah. um, the other thing is about settings and getting the notifications. That's definitely a little bit more technical in nature. <laughs> so there are some caveats to getting notifications for the mobile app, and it's mostly around, the, the, there's several criteria. One, the user has to have the app installed on their device. They need to be logged in. They also need to enable the permissions for to receive notifications. Uh, this is all based on like we can't just turn notifications on. That's not that's not in our power to do so. The user has to choose to do that. But if they get over those three things, installing the app, logging in, and allowing notifications, they should be receiving those push notifications uh, when you use them. So, but if for any reason, if you're having any problem with that, or if you're not seeing it, if it's not working for you guys in any way, shape or form, please reach out to us, let us know. Cause like, as soon as we start to see a trend in any sort of issue, we really dive into it to make sure it's not impacting the platform. And if it is like, say for example, push notifications were going out to any customers. I'm not saying we'd drop everything, but we would get right on that and we would get to the bottom of it and get it resolved. Um, and there was a really good um, feedback point about being able to tailor the notifications because if, if a member keeps getting them on their phone, there's a concern that they'll switch it off and then they won't receive anymore. So I think that's something we definitely would address. That's usually, a, we, we, we really like settings like that at Club Runner. So <laughs> yeah. I could see that being the next step. Yeah, right now it is just blanket opt-in, uh, but we, as we introduce more types of push notifications and more options for users to receive them, uh, it's 100% in our plans to make sure we give you some level of control over opting in and out of those and make, and and reporting on those as well, right? Like you wanna know how many people are opted in or out and to what things, uh, I mean, I don't think it. I don't think it's a huge secret. I know we're going to keep pushing on our mobile app to to be more and greater. So, 
as we introduce new notification settings, we definitely have to give members choice or we'll just annoy them, right? Like like with any other thing, we, we have to give them some control so that they can they feel confident about using it. And remember, we really do want the app to be the first class member experience that all of your users are using. So we're gonna be spending extra time and energy there to make sure that those things are in place to protect both you know yourself and and the members of the club, right? We we don't want to annoy them. We, the district we don't want the district to annoy them. We don't want the club to annoy them. We want to make sure they have control of those those, those features and functionality. Okay, let me open the Q and A back. <laughs> I have to close it when I'm when I'm answering questions or I'll, my my uh, I'll 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 deviate and I'll go go. Uh, well, well, while you look for the next one, um, I can answer this one here um, from Margaret. So will events, we currently have the auto transfer to cloud events. So first and foremost, data migration is not something you will have to worry about as part of uh, our movement to Nova. This is something we've always done over the years as we continue to enhance the system. Um, we just, we're, we're just encouraging you to create your new events on, on cloud events to take advantage of the features. So um, same thing with your membership data, any documents, any module that gets affected, usually that's, uh, you should not have to worry about migrating the data. Uh, another question was about when do we think the multi-factor uh, part will be ready to go? I think this is actually pretty pretty soon, Zach, right? Um, I don't think we're very far off. Uh, if we wanted to pull the scenes back a little bit, we just talked about how we're, we're implementing the policies. Uh, so I think that's at least outstanding before we can roll it out. But under the hood, I could technically turn it on and annoy a whole bunch of people right now. No, we definitely don't want to make it. So I think we're comfortable saying, you know, by July 1 um, at the very latest. It's, it's coming in the pipeline. Like it's, it's yeah. something we're re we really do want out. Um, there was a question earlier for the the integration services. So I guess I want to touch on that. They asked, is the club RI integration screen that we showed something that they find in Club Runner or My Rotary? The screens that we were showing off with the choices of opting in and out of all the data choices, that was all on Club Runner. You do need, it is opting into integration is a two-step process. You do need to have a club officer at least once in the history of the club, go to My Rotary and opt in data sharing. Uh, this is how Rotary does it. You have to approve Club Runner as a vendor, and you can choose whether we have full access to your system or read-only access. Uh, but once that's set up, once, it, once it's done once, you usually don't need to go back and uh, change it again. But uh, we continue to add more settings to the Club Runner side of things, so you do want to return there. I casually suggest clubs check it like once a year, mostly so like, do you know the things that you're opting in and out of? And if you didn't know you were opting in and out of those things, you should probably bring that up at your next meeting. Uh, an item that we get a lot, or at least that I, in the past way, I used to see a lot more is a lot of clubs would ask me, should we be sharing our birthday data with Rotary International? To which I say, that is your choice. If you choose, if you turn it on, it'll start sending new data to Rotary for those members' birthdays. Uh, and in that example, like it was, uh, Usually it was a club like someone was really objection to having their birthday shared. So instead of objecting the you, instead of opting the user out, they opted the whole club out of sharing birthdays. So if you have one user in the club who's uncomfortable sharing one data point, go opt them out and leave everybody else in the club in. Of course, and all of those data points are opted out or they have opt-in controls, not only for the club, but also for the, uh, the individual member. So speaking of RI integration, um, it would be good to answer this question, which I hope you can understand, Zach. So I think it's relating to email addresses and RI integration. I know that there was something recently done with that, but currently if a member changes an email address on Clubrunner, they still need to go to RI to change their login email address because RI uses email as um, your username. Right. So then that sync creates an error message for the administrator that handles syncs, but the member does not know what they need to do. Is there an automated email that could go to the member to notify them or future syncs accommodate a login email address change to RI? And I know this is this is always a hot I topic. So I, I actually think to... we just rolled that out like last week. Uh, it, we've improved that entire process. So uh, working with Rotary's integration team, we were able to figure out a better way to send the email data to Rotary. So less frequently, you should be getting errors. Now, with that said, we as a, 
external vent, like as an external partner to Rotary, we can't overwrite the email when it's linked as the member sign in email. And that's not our policy. That's that, that's a hundred. That, that's on. That's Rotary restricting all third party vendors from doing it. It's not just Club Runner that can't do it. No one's allowed to touch the primary sign in email. But we did find out that we can add the new email appropriately, mark it as your primary email, and now just like the suggestion actually has, we will send an email to the member telling them that hey, your primary email was updated at Rotary, but we couldn't change your sign in ID. Please go to my Rotary to complete this process. So that's a, that's really fortuitous. That's a great question, and I fortuitous timing. So like ninety five percent positive that's out because I I had an email that I had to deal with about it. <laughs> Speaking of emails, um, there's a question here from Penny. Will email be unified in Nova? Currently, I can only see emails I have sent, but sometimes I've not kept a copy of an email someone else sent, but I need it again. Will we be able to see all emails? So actually. Penny, you don't. Uh, if, if if that's from Penny, you don't even need to wait for Nova. Um, every user in uh, in Club Runner has access to the My Email History page in their account. Not only does that let you view most of the emails, we don't let you view like security related emails in, in in the email system, but those are usually very temporary emails anyway. Um, but you can actually not only can you view all of those emails, you can also resend them to yourself. So if you log into your club, it's under my club runner, my email history. If you log into the district, it's under the four members. It's also called my email history. But it is your full history of all the emails that have been sent to you through Club Runner, regardless if it came from a contact. Well, there's probably a couple little catches that it doesn't link up. Like if you used a widget contact form, th th those wouldn't be linked to your user. But anything that was targeted in the system to you should be available in your My Email History. So um, yeah, you, you should be able to see that today. Right now, in fact. <laughs> um, and then there was a question about the page templates. Um, so the bulletin and the sort of like the pre-designed bulletin and page templates, is that part of the Nova enhancement or, or it's available now? So I can, I can help answer that. So it's actually something, it, it's independent of Nova. It's something that we are actually actively working on. Uh, but one of the things that we really wanna make sure we clear first before um, releasing them is having RI's branding team sort of take a look and make sure that they, you know, fit all of the, you know, compliance for, for branding. Just because it's it's a big responsibility on our part, and if we launch it and there's something that we you know that was designed that wasn't quite correct, um, it can replicate quite fast. Um, so yeah, we're we're really excited to to work with them on that, and um, you know that that's something that we're hoping to have ready by July one. At least you know it can be ongoing, and we can have some set of templates, and it can become an ongoing thing. So I see that a more recent question came in about the mobile app again, and I, I just want to reemphasize that it's the same mobile app. Uh, so uh, if you go to the App Store today or you already have Club Runner downloaded and installed on your device, that is the same app that we were talking about and showing off. It should just be updated. There is not a specifically new application. It's just updates to the existing application. All right, so I know there's a bunch of other good questions still sitting around, um, and it's not that we don't want to answer them, but I think it's uh, I think we've kind of reached the natural conclusion to our presentation. Uh, so I want to just affirm a couple things. One, if we did not get to your question today, if it's very specific to you, a member of our team will reach out directly to you to help you get those questions answered. Um, any general questions, we will be posting a roll-up Q&A so that we'll get everything together and you'll be able to see all the answers to the questions that we gave. Uh, lastly, there will be a survey going out as part of this webinar, and we would love to get your feedback to them. Uh, feedback to both the webinar and the questions. Um, and lastly, I just really want to encourage people to join the community uh, because it is really great as we see more customers join. Um, being able to help each other is, I think, an important part of being, uh, you know, doing the, this good work in the world and being able to share your experiences and your knowledges uh, helps to pass and continue those traditions down, right? Like you sharing that information in our community with the other members of the Club Runner platform can really help them take their game to the next level too. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of all in this together, right? So, uh, yeah. <laughs>
Great. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And if your question wasn't answered, we will be following up, um, you know, independently, separately. Um, but I did want to just, you know, say that appreciate everyone joining us. And um, we're really looking forward to uh, all of the sessions, especially for the 13th, when we're going to be able to show you a little bit more about what's uh, what's to come. So yeah, thanks so much for, for your time.